the actual project that I wanted to refinish. It's uh, just a handle, something simple, and uh, I've already sandblasted it, but you can see there's flash rust on it. We've had a few rainy days here, and I had a door open, and it got rusted again. Yeah, I've gone ahead and sandblasted this handle to sandblast off any kind of residual plating or rust that was on it. So it's just a matte finish steel part. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and finish cleaning it, <clears throat> make sure it passes a water break test. I just went ahead and cleaned it off. It passed the water break test. I'm not going to dip it in the hydrochloric acid this time uh, because this handle here, this rubber handle, I don't want acid to get up, drawn up into that rubber and then have it come off at a later point to corrode this handle. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna skip that step and go ahead and put it right in the bath. right between those two plates so it throws on both sides and hook up my negative lead and just let it go for a while I'll let it go for about 10 minutes <clears throat> And before I forget, I have to put the fish bubbler in there too, keep us agitated. There, that'll keep the, uh, the bath more uniform. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Turned out okay, there's a little bit dark around the edges which I don't like. I found I can minimize that by using shorter cycle times. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off. I went ahead and hit that uh, with a piece of fine steel wool to clean that up. It turned out pretty nice. It was getting a little dark around the edges. That happens sometimes. I'm not certain why. I think maybe it has to do with uh, it getting too close to the to the anodes maybe. But once I hit it with a steel wool it looks really nice. Shined right up. So I'm not gonna leave it in there as long as time. I'm gonna reduce it to what I was doing before which is five minutes. Anyway, that's a pretty nice plate on there. It's pretty, it's uniform and it looks nice. I'm going to throw another layer on that side and then I'll go ahead and do this side and we'll uh, go ahead and chromate them. I'm going to blow that off first. I wanted to blow that off real quick to make sure there was no steel wool contaminants in there. And we'll let that go again for about another five or six minutes. That one, that turned out pretty decent, the primer gray finish. 
a little dark around the edges, but I just left it in there a little bit, uh, less of, less time. Uh, didn't allow the grains to build up around the sharp edges. I'm just going to rinse that off. You don't have to use cleaner at this point, just distilled water is fine. Just to rinse the zinc acetate off. Now a uh, <clears throat> the fine bristle stainless steel brush would work better for this. It would be a lot faster because I have to work in these recesses here. But I don't have one of those right now. I had one for welding and it got destroyed here a while back and I haven't replaced it yet. So I'll make do with what I have. When I was plating this side I noticed that with the bubbler on that some of the acid was coming up and splashing on this part and it was causing it to rust so I had to sandblast it again on both sides what I'm afraid of is if I leave that bubbler on it's going to splash up on this zinc and it's going to dissolve it so what I'm going to do for this run I'm not going to turn the bubbler on and hopefully uh, it won't need agitation to plate we'll see power to it. And there we go. Okay, here's the second plate for this side of the handle. That was a 10 minute run. You see that looks pretty uniform. That's without agitation too. That looks that's a really nice finish. A little bit of build up there. So I'll rinse this off. Now, what I'm going to do differently with this one, instead of using the steel wool, I, did, I changed my mind on this. What I'm going to do is vapor blast just to give us a satin finish. Uh, it's actually, this is, I find it was pretty difficult to get steel wool down in these recesses. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and vapor blast this, which will leave a really nice finish. Then I'll go ahead and clear chromate it. Now I'm going to blast this under really low pressure. take much because the zinc is so soft. side I already did before I did the final plate on this side so that whole thing's done now I have two layers on this side two layers on this side both paper blasted now it's ready to be chromated okay so here's the almost finished part it's done plating uh, I put in the, the vapor blaster and it has a nice uniform satin finish on it much quicker than going over it with a piece of steel wool and it has more of the finish that I need. Looking back now I wish I had done the same thing with this dummy part so if I was to do this over again before I put it in the yellow chromate I would go ahead and bead blast this, put a satin finish on put it in the chromate and then this wouldn't be quite as shiny gold it, I mean it would look it would look more like what cadmium is supposed to look like. It's the same process as before I'll put it in here anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds in constant motion. Just going to agitate that for about 15 seconds. That's good. Rinse it off with distilled water. 
reverse osmosis and deionized water works just as well. That's actually what this is. Okay, so that side's done. I'll go ahead and do this side. You don't want to put this chromate on too thick. It seems like the more is better, but what happens is you'll, you'll be drying it, you'll be blow drying it, and it actually starts peeling off. So less is definitely better in this case. So you really can't see much of a change, but I'll go ahead and dry it here. But it's on there. Okay, that's pretty much it. I just dried it off. It looks the same as before I dipped it in there, but that's the way this clear is. It really doesn't show. So um, I'll let this set for 24 hours. Let that, that conversion coating go ahead and harden up a little bit before I put it back into use. But that's how I plate things to restore zinc finish or cadmium finish as far as that goes. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you want to do this yourself like I said you can use D-cell batteries. For something like this you should be able to get away with it because this is only you're only talking maybe three or four square inches. So but anyway if you want to get want to get one of these power supplies like I have you can get them off of Amazon. They're real reasonable nowadays and they're reliable. Uh, I've gotten quite a bit of use out of this for anodizing, and of course, since I had it, I used it in plating too. So, you know, give it a shot. The worst that can happen is that um, the plating doesn't come out right, and if that's the case, and it comes out crappy, you take the hydrochloric acid, dip it in there, and it'll dissolve the zinc right off, and start over again. It's just that simple.